Hello, everybody. My name is Paul, and I am an editor at Sepulchre Productions, and above all else, I love video games. And fortunately for everybody here, I also love to play the best horror video game, and that is Resident Evil. And so what I'm going to be doing from now on is, every now and again, I'd like to showcase a game from the horror genre, since uh, that's what we are all about at Sepulchre Productions. So I'm going to start with Resident Evil 1, the remake, uh, for GameCube and just do a let's play, if you will, and uh, I think it'll be fun. I haven't played this game in a long time. My first episode is going to run kind of long, as there is an intro cutscene and all that, and we want to have some gameplay, so uh, without any further to do, let's go. Oh, and actually I need my TV remote there. Hold on. This is it, Resident Evil Rebirth for the Nintendo GameCube. I am absolutely so excited about this. I can hardly contain myself if it isn't already obvious. So this is the remake of Resident Evil 1, which was originally for the PlayStation 1. This remake is on the Nintendo GameCube. It is referred to as Resident Evil Rebirth. Um, this game absolutely made me shit my pants when I was a kid. Uh, this game just kept me awake and it is absolutely the most atmospheric experience I have ever had in a video game, and it is now, and forever will be, my favorite game. It has this absolutely great art style about it. Um, Resident Evil. These, still to this day, I think, beautiful pre-rendered background. Right in the beginning we get to pick um, if we like mountain climbing or hiking, and this actually determines the uh, difficulty, so we've gone with hiking because I haven't played this game in so long and I'm probably going to die like a noob if I try to choose something too difficult. So you can play as J uh, Chris Redfield or Jill Valentine. Um, either or, they're both police officers. And um, Jill's story was a little bit more story driven. Uh, it's a little bit easier actually than Chris's. Chris's, there's a little less uh, character interaction there. A little bit less story driven and a little bit more difficult as well. So we're going to go with Jill. And we're going to go with hiking, because frankly, I probably just suck at this game after all these years, but we're going to see what I can remember. And I am I'm so excited to do this. I probably haven't played this game since, um, 2006? Yeah, it would have to be. And I'm 25 now, so... Yeah. Probably 17. I haven't played this game since I was 17. Uh, team's helicopter was a derelict. Of course, if you don't know the story already, there is a pharmaceutical corporation named Umbrella Save Incorporated, the and they have a secret laboratory in the Raccoon City Forest underneath the mansion out there. And they we have created this virus known as the T-Virus, and it has the power to reanimate the dead. And so... This has all gone terribly wrong, as one would expect, and there are zombies running around everywhere and uh, killing people and all these people gone missing, like hikers going missing. So uh, the STARS team, which is the... Uh, I can't believe that I'm going to screw this up. Special Tactics and Rescue Service, that's it. And um, they are a special team that's part of the Raccoon City Police Department, and they are being sent into the area to investigate these grisly murders and disappearances. Oh, poor Joseph. Getting his face bit off. Joseph Frost. Delicious. Uh, I used to love this. This was just the most beautiful thing, especially if you uh, played the original and you saw the, at times, horrendous live-action cutscene. Probably not a good time to freeze up. A lot of the fun of this when I was a kid was uh, my friend Kyle and I played the shit out of this game. And uh, one of the great things about it back then was we used to laugh at everything, like um, all this dialogue and stuff. Like we, we picked little things to laugh at, and of course when you're 14 everything is hilarious. So like 
we would laugh at people swearing. To this day, I don't know why. Like, Barry was our favorite character, because he just seemed like sort of a hard-ass, like, gun-toting redneck. Like, there's this part coming up where he says, damn it, after shooting, and for some reason that was hilarious. Wait for it. <laughs> like, right, I don't know why that was so funny. Enter the survival horror. There are only three STARS members left now. Captain Wesker, Barry, and myself. We don't know where Chris is. What is this place? It's a house. Not quite your ordinary house, that's for sure. <laughs> hey, Wesker, where's Chris? Jill, no. You don't want to go back out there. So much better than the PlayStation 1 version. Fine. Jill, don't that? open that door. Chris? No. Jill, go and investigate. I'm going with her. <laughs> I can't help but think of the PlayStation 1 dialogue for every single line right. that I'm hearing. You two go. I'll secure this area. Stay Chris sharp. is our old partner, you know. <laughs> <sighs> So atmospheric. I mean, look at these backgrounds. We're I mean, yes, modern games look a lot better than this, but we're talking GameCube era. I mean, this was easily the best game on the GameCube, like, in terms of graphics. Um, and, I mean, it benefited so much from these pre-rendered backgrounds. And they could put all their focus on the character models. Take an ink ribbon. Yes, we shall. We have to save using ink ribbons in these typewriters. Get my controls here. Yes, okay. I have configured the controller correctly. Like I said, I do apologize for some of the audio I glitches that are going to go on. There's this. some little crackles and pops, but that is just the way of it. Blood. Did you just lick that blood? Jill. You don't know who that is. That guy could have had AIDS. What if it was actually the blood of a zombie? So, like, now Barry is infected with the T-Virus, and before the game is out, he's going to become one of the ravenous undead. Fucking brilliant. All of your instincts, as a specially trained uh, police officer, like SWAT member, all of your uh, instincts tell you that when you see a puddle of blood, immediately lick it off of your fingers. God. Jesus, look at this shit. Like, it's so scary. It's so tense. Oh my god. Ah, yes. Can I help you? Oh, we had jokes for everything back in the day. Oh, man. Quick, run away. I'm not wasting ammo on this guy. We can have Barry take care of him Look for out. us. It's a monster. And actually, we'll have to fight this Let zombie either way, so it's best to not to waste any ammo. This game was true survival horror. Ammo was precious. You didn't just go around shooting everything. What That's crazy. The hell is this thing? I found Kenneth killed by this thing. Let's report this to Wesker. Yeah, you're probably thinking you shouldn't have licked that blood, huh, Barry? All right. So, yeah, let's go find Wesker. If I can... Okay. There we go. Oh, God, I just remember this thing we used to do. This is so bad. Hold on. See if I can do it. This is really stupid. I don't... <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> uh, you know how stupid, like, little 14-year-old perverts are. So, like, this is, this is just how it went. Do the berry grind. Yeah, uh... Oh, yeah, bear. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm just grinding on him. I'm done. I swear. All right. No, this is serious. People are dying. People are dying. This is. Let's get. Let's focus. Let's get serious here. Wesker. Jill, help me look for him. There was so much about the PlayStation 1 version that um, they just, you know, that they could improve upon for this. Um, I mean, graphics aside, um, adding the thunderstorm with the lightning coming in, oh my goodness. 
I mean, that's just fantastic. Having lighting at all. Um, the PS1 version, it was either somewhat bright or somewhat dark. I, I seem to remember that, um, depending on what hallway or room you were in. You actually have, like, these long shadows being cast, these dark corridors. Um, the whole thing is just so ominous compared to what it used Barry. to be. Any luck, Jill? No, nothing. What's going on around here? I can't figure it out. Same here. Chris, and now Wesker. There's not much we can do. The dialogue is a bit cheesy, but... I'll investigate the dining room. I mean, seriously, okay, like... I'll try the door on the other side. The PlayStation 1 version makes this acting just look like, I don't know, like Shakespeare. Okay. Oh, I almost forgot. It's a lock. But they didn't record dialogue the same way back then. They would just like piece together fragments of people talking, and it sounded all robotic and weird. Let's meet up in this hall. Got it? Okay. always splitting up terrible idea i mean not i mean terrible idea logistically but actually a very good idea at the time for the video game itself i mean that's my problem with modern resident evil games um or anything that's focused on sort of horror in general um aside from dead space i guess which is that you just you're never alone in video games anymore you know like all the modern resident evil games you have a partner and it just drives me up the fucking wall you were alone in this game utterly alone it was terrifying. Something about a mansion is just by far like the, the creepiest setting in the world. The idea of, I mean, me personally, I just, I love the idea of ominous hallways with just these doors at the end of them and, you know, what is in each room. Sort of an unknown, uneasy place to explore. Okay, we got the map. Not exactly a puzzle. Pretty easy, actually. Now what I want to do, if I can... No. If I could... J Jill. Yeah. Okay. The controls are a bit archaic, yes, but I love them. I love them because it's nostalgic. That's what it is. It's nostalgia. So what we're going to do is push this dresser back because I happen to know that there is a zombie coming. That's the thing, with the GameCube version, they were able to prey upon the gamers, like us, the gamers, who who knew this game inside and out on the PlayStation 1, you know. Anybody that played the original knew there was a zombie laying on the floor right where I'm standing right now. And when you walked over it, he would grab you. Using defensive items such as daggers will allow you to escape momentarily when grabbed by an enemy. However, you will not be able to escape when the enemy grabs you from behind. To equip a defensive... Blah, 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 blah. So the point is, we come down this hallway right now, and there's no zombie. But we find this knife at the end of the hall. So there's no zombie, so we're safe, right? You know, like the game keeps different, okay. But no, they just put it in a different way. Don't ask me how that zombie showed up when I had already pushed the dresser back into the doorway, but you know. So no, I'm just gonna, we'll just do the defensive item. The defensive item was a great addition to this game. You could pick up these knives and other things, actually, like Chris can use a taser in the environment. You can pick up these items, and uh, when an enemy grabs you, you can automatically use that one-time item to uh, fend off your enemy without taking any damage. Which is pretty good, because in any other situation, you're gonna get bit. I'm gonna name this zombie. I'm gonna name you Pete. How's it going, Pete? Got a knife in your head. Now don't ask me why, but if you kill Pete, you would not be able to get your knife back, unless you blow off his head. If you blow off his head, get a headshot, you can get your knife back. But other than that, you're, you're SOL. So we're gonna leave Pete in there, and that other door was locked, so we can't go down there yet. So we will head back the way we came. Need to start exploring, find our way out of here. Will we get out alive? I don't know. Actually, you know what? I need to go back in there. I'm trying to... My instincts are kicking in. I'm trying to remember from when I was a kid. We're gonna take this shield now. Because we're gonna need it later for a puzzle. Anyway. Yes, we can examine items. I know this. I know this. Emblem. Yeah. 
gets galled all around the outer edges due to frequent fitting. Hmm. All right. Oh, that's right. Our zombie friend from the beginning is actually in this hallway, and you can hear him actually. And I know that if you go just to where you're in the frame, and you yeah, and he stands down there, he won't move towards you until you take one more step and then it's the creepiest shit ever he just stands down there moaning oh god oh poor kenneth my first name is kenneth actually so we used to always talk about how if we were in resident evil i would be the first one to die it's the film that belonged to kenneth i need a video player to see what's recorded on it oh yeah that's a nice little easter egg they throw in at the end of the game i remember that you find a vcr towards the end there All right, so there's ammunition on this table. I remember that. I remember thinking it was really weird that they were called magazines. Like, I didn't know that that was a name for a handgun clip. Actually, uh, most of my knowledge, early knowledge of weapons came from Resident Evil, so I actually didn't know that it was called a magazine. And I remember looking at it at first and thinking, this is not a magazine, because I was thinking, like, Nintendo Power or something, because I was 14. But now I know. All right, this guy here, I know if we walk too far, he'll stand right up and kill me. So see if we can, wow, I already botched that. Man, why is he coming at you so fast? I used to be able to run right past him. I... Fuck. Ah, shit. Ugh. Whatever, I'm not wasting my ammo on you. I'll get you later. Grab the shiny, the golden arrow, yes. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give More ammo. Ammo is a little bit less scarce in this version that I'm playing, um, or this difficulty rather, because there aren't quite as many enemies. There normally would have been like two zombies in this hallway. So I can be a little bit more liberal with my ammunition, I think. Still gonna try to conserve, you know, it's still survival horror. I always loved shooting this guy from across the balcony. I always thought I was so pro. Aiming was weird too, like there was no lock-on system, you have to sort of just aim in the general direction. Okay, see, so, you no, know, he's not actually dead because there's no blood on the floor. That's how you know. So let's see if I can... Do I have to... Yeah, you have to equip it to use it. You can't just... I was thinking of like Resident Evil 4, I could just hit L and pull out my knife. Yeah, I'll stab you. Stabby, stabby. Ah, there we go. He's dead. And see, there's the blood. Perfect. Um, there's another defensive knife here. So we have one more defensive item now. That's good. And while we're up here, I need to push this statue off the balcony to get that, uh, jewel. I understand that it's like a game mechanic. You know, that like, to get the jewel you have to push the thing off the balcony, but... Logistically, I mean realistically, why can't I climb up, or even just stand on my tiptoes and grab that thing? I mean, clearly it's right there. <laughs> I'm not questioning it, I just, I'll go with it. Push you off. Yeah. Collateral damage. We will grab that next time we go through. But for now, we are headed to the graveyard to deal with this arrowhead that we just got. Ah, secret door. Now, see, this wasn't in the PS1 version. In the PS1 version of this game, the objective of the first sort of like third of the game was to find these four crests um, and to put them into a door and it opened up the door to the secret lab. And there are some new additions to the mansion in this version and um, new objectives. Instead of four crests that open up the door to the secret lab, there are four masks uh, that you place in this tomb. And when you place them, they awaken the sort of like king zombie um i believe his name is the crimson head elder 
they added a thing in this game where in the remake where uh, you can ah secret shotgun shells yep I remember they added a thing where um, zombies after you kill them if you don't burn them after killing them or blow off their head they can come back within like 20 minutes I think it is they'll actually reanimate when you run over them and they will run full speed and slash at you making them even more dangerous and uh, the zombie that is entombed down here that we are going to release after we collect all four masks is the Crimson Head Elder so he's sort of the king boss zombie and he's he's a very angry son of a bitch alright so we've detached the arrowhead from our golden arrow and placed it into the the tomb I remember the first time we ever saw the stairway uh, Kyle and I we said uh, Paul if we ever see a staircase like that in real life with that kind of lighting we are gonna turn and run the other direction okay we got the book of curse we have to examine the book examine the book not close the menu spin her around yeah we have ourselves the sword key Hell yeah, I'm removing that. I'm gonna open all the doors. All right, so here's a little insight into what we're doing with this uh, with this tomb. The four masks, a mask that speaks no evil, a mask that smells no evil, a mask that sees no evil, a mask that cannot speak, smell, or see evil. When all four fall into place, evil will awaken. Foreshadowing. Let's look at our mansion key here. Just in case, you know, if we hadn't played this game before, we would have to examine this to see that it is a sword key. And therefore, we can unlock all doors with the sword insignia. Get the fuck out of here. Now again, I'm playing this on sort of the easy mode. Like, there, there would have been two zombies, I think, in this cemetery. I don't know, I'm kind of regretting it, and I'm kind of not. I mean, it's going to get harder later, so I guess for right now, it's kind of like easy street, but... It'll get harder later, I promise. Okay, so we have the sword key, so we should... No, actually, we need to go back across and unlock this other door. Where's Pete? I hear him. Yeah, Pete's back down the hall, it's okay. Alright, let's unlock our first door. You used the sword key. I did indeed. Now this hallway has a dirty little secret. Which is the window. Pick you up. Pick you... Do I have to be, like, in front of it? Not on top of it? Why won't you pick up? I want the knife. I want the, not the. Uh, maybe I can only have one defensive knife at a time. I can't remember. Ah, oh, god, that scared me. Um, the window. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> the first time you run through this hallway, the windows like crack, and the second time you come back. Uh, well, actually, yeah. The second time you ever come into this hallway, I'm not sure if you have to run back the way you came, or if you can go back through the way we're going right now again, and nothing will happen. But I think it's the next time you come into this hallway, dogs will actually jump through the window. Uh, there's two dogs. More ammunition. Good, good. And that's, yeah, that's what I thought. I was using the wrong button to try and pick up the dagger, like a freaking idiot so we need to bear that in mind the next time we come into this hallway we are going to be attacked by ravenous doberman pinchers easily the sexiest looking angle in the whole game look at this this could be a modern game it really could probably helps that I've stretched it to 1080p um actually we can go out here yeah, let's, I have the space. I have one inventory slot. Let's go out here now and get this uh, plant stuff that we're going to need. 
There's a dog on the other side of this fence, and like the hallway, the second time that we ever come out here, the dog will jump the fence and attack us. But we get we get one shot first off. We got some herbs here, so I'm going to grab the herb and use it before I take the fertilizer. Fine. That's another great thing. There is absolutely no, like, meter indicating your health on the heads-up display. There is no heads-up display at all. I think that's one of the things I love. There is nothing. Like, you don't know how much ammo you have until you run out. You don't know what your health is, really, until you check the menu and look at the uh, the, the meter. So good. This is my favorite zombie in the entire game, by the way. I like to call him the rubber ducky zombie. And we had a great running gag that I will lovingly create for you here. <coughs> Wet. Uh, where's my rubber ducky? <coughs> Could you imagine, like, <laughs> I mean, the zombie wanting <laughs> wanting to eat you is bad enough, but then there's another zombie just, he just wants his rubber ducky. Alright. So what we get out of all that, other than an awesome cutscene, is uh, another dagger. We're, like, stocking up right now, just because I remember everything. Okay. In this hallway, we have the room with the shotgun, which is a trap, so we cannot do that yet. All right. We need to go through this door to get to the first save room. Oh, God. I have made a terrible mistake. That is not the right door. Uh, this one. Oh, shit. I got turned around there. Ooh. Okay. And some... Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, we're going to stay on the stairs because they cannot bite you on the stairs. They can only vomit acidic stomach fluid on you. And we will conserve ammo by using the knife, hopefully. This is probably a really stupid idea. Come on. Come on. Uh, come on. Uh, come on. Uh, yeah, you like that, don't you? He's not dead. There's no way. Come on. What the hell's with the... Did I actually kill him? Nice, he's dead. Oh, that's so good. Wow, that was pro. He ain't getting back up. All right, so this, uh, can I take this herb? Take it with me? No, I can't, my inventory's full, that's right. Okay, <clears throat> we're gonna go into a very great room, which is the save room. Become very familiar with this music because this is the only room in the game you're technically completely safe in. All right, we have an item box in which all item boxes in the mansion are connected, so whatever we put in here, we can access from wherever we want. Let's combine our ink ribbons, put the shield in there, put the fertilizer in there for a bit. We don't need it just yet. We'll keep the key, we'll keep the ink ribbons. Let's take our ammunition back, we need that. Wow, 65 bullets, we're doing pretty good. Um, we're gonna take some more ammo here. 80, 80 bullets, that's... Alright, so this is basically a little tutorial um, that, that was added in the remake uh, as to deal with the uh, previously mentioned crimson heads. We can actually burn the bodies of the zombies that we kill so that they will not come back. And the catch is we have a little canteen and it can carry two swigs, if you will, of oil. And uh, we need to find a lighter. And then with that oil, we can burn the bodies of zombies, at least two of them, before needing to come back to a canteen, which are found in these save rooms and refilling. So there's still plenty of kerosene or oil or whatever. Kerosene. And uh, now we have two uses. So, let's save our progress now that we're here, thank god. And that is gonna be it for today. We are calling it. We've made it thus far. And we will continue trying to escape next time. So, thank you very much for watching. My name is Paul. And until next time, stay scared. <laughs>